our green jeep has an issue and it has it has a, a roaring in the rear end rear axle i switched out the tires and that didn't that didn't solve the problem so and the reason i did this is the one i switched out is because the tread is not wearing evenly it's very difficult to see on camera but this edge is higher than this one and oftentimes that will that will cause a, a little bit of howling but after i got it off and looked it over really well it didn't seem to be very pronounced so anyway i put the spare on it and it didn't change the noise at all so i suspect i suspect a wheel bearing I really do this tire here it's a uh, it's smoother than the other one so it's extremely unlikely that the tires are the problem so I'm gonna jack it up chalk the front wheel go ahead and do that and run it Okay, we'll get it jacked up, and I can um, only find one of those darn jack stands. We're going to have to take a chance. Here we go. I'll let it roll. Turns pretty slow. Get a little faster. Can't really tell anything. Can't really hear anything. I do kind of hear something. Let me try something over here. Let's try to stop this wheel. Right. Nice exhaust spitting out stuff. Stink me up. Stop this wheel so I can go listen to the other one. <laughs> it stopped. I hear a little bit of something. tell much let's stop it it seems somewhat quiet I can't stop it that way I hear something over there now. Well, in order to pull the axle out, I gotta take the cover off. So maybe I'll just go ahead and take the cover off. Anyway, I hope that's not a critical problem there. Yeah, I think I hear the bearing. That better not be a big problem. I don't think it is. 
but I think it's a bearing over here. I can really hear noise. A little bit of its brakes. But I hear a little mechanical sound. Let's stop it again. Alright. Let's see if it'll stay stopped. Let's go listen to the other side now. It's a lot more quiet over here. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I'll kill it. <clears throat> yeah, I have to take the cover off anyway, so that's what I'll do. I'll take the cover off of it and then we'll look at the well, then we'll get to working on taking the bearing out. I'm not uh you know, 100% sure what's all necessary, but we'll, we'll get into it. So I got most of the, I have most of the bolts out. They're, by the way, they're 13 millimeters, if you want to know. And I'm leaving a couple of them in there so the cover don't fly off and all this grease just leak out like crazy. Get you a little screwdriver, put in between the housing and the cover. And pry it out a little bit. There you go. And you'll get your eruption of nastiness going on there. Pry it in there another place. And let it come out. It doesn't smell real bad. It smells like, you know, gear lubricant. It's got a pretty good translucent quality to it. This stuff lasts a really long time. A lot of cars go over 200,000 miles and never get it changed. I, I don't think I ever changed it in my little Dodge Dakota. It's got nearly, it's got over 250,000 miles on it. Maybe I'm just lucky, but no bearing failures, no rear end howling. This stuff is really good, good lubricant. I'm not advising that you drive it that long. I'm just saying that it's a uh, pretty durable and normal everyday use any more bolts up top nope just these two on the bottom i haven't seen any water at all in it and that's also a good sign been sealed with uh, RTV silicone. I see the red silicone on the end of a bolt. I saw gray silicone. So it's been into before for some reason. Who knows what. I see a little seepage around that well, but that's not a critical thing. Not really. That is somewhat normal not desired but somewhat normal it's not a, a big issue well these silicone has got this so gummed up these bolts are hard to turn by hand let's get the screwdriver in here one more time and open one more there you go it's cracked and wide now look at that silicone boy that's a bunch of it I don't like to use that much and I don't really want to drop this in the pan either Could this be something else to clean up easy there we go gears look good and yeah, they look real nice I don't see anything weird in there so 
except for this mess of silicone. Holy crap. It's a bunch of silicone. A little bit excessive. I'm going to let that drip for a while. And it will. Now what you have to do is turn this. I'll turn it with my foot. And well, you have to stop the other side. And you're looking for that bolt because it retains that pin. That pin keeps the axle from sliding in any further. And if you see that C-clip up in there, let me point to it and not drop my phone in this grease. That C-clip right there. When you push the axle in, you're able to get the C-clip out and then the axle will slide right out. Of course, I'll have to take off the brakes, the wheel and the brakes and all that to, you know, so the axle can come out. But that's my next thing to do. Okay. Okay. Let's get back under here. Went and found a few wrenches. And I think will serve my needs. One of them is bound to. First, we'll try this socket. Oh, it'll almost work. It's too long. It needs to be short as heck. Hopefully, this one will do it. It's a eight millimeter. Yeah, it'll get on there. You, you really should use a six point since that's what the bolt is. I don't think I have a six point. I upset the park brake and the uh oh that is loose as a goose. That worries me. And the uh transmission is in in park. So maybe it won't rotate. Let's see here. I ain't gonna be able to get on that. Let's try it. These, oh look, it loosened up. Thank goodness. A lot of times they won't. They'll be so stinking tight. You have to use some torch on there to heat it up. And that's really unnecessary to tighten them up so much. Some people do. Some people do. But it's coming out, which is... Boy, which is a surprising blessing. Unbelievable. Now, this tone ring here, I understand that it's for the uh, speedometer. Sometimes they're for, uh, you know, the uh, ABS or traction control, but I think that's for the speedometer. From what I understand, I'm not 100% sure. Man, this is wearing me out. I am not in good shape for being a mechanic. I've been driving a truck for too long. It has messed with my ability to do a lot of things. <laughs> my arm cramps up. Oh, give me a different position. I don't know what that position is going to be, though. I'll just have to tough it out. It's almost out anyway, so just deal with it. Building muscles, I guess. Hurting them for darn sure. I don't know if it's my muscles hurting or my joints hurting. Ouch. Probably joints. Never going to be the easy thing, is it? Alright, I think that's out. Yeah, there we go. Done on the board. Now this pin, you can reach up in behind it. Ouch. Yeah, I'll just slide right out. Let's, uh, 
I could probably knock it back out of gear. Or at least the parking brake and see what happens. So I'll go do that. I've got it out of gear. And we got the parking brake released. So I'll turn the wheel with my toe and move it so the pin will drop out easier. Reach up in here and push on the pin. And as you can see, it's dropping down. There it goes. Rotate it tire a little more. Oh, the pin is slippery. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Get the pin out. And now, all we have to do is take the wheel off, remove the caliper and and the rotor possibly and slide the axle right out. So that'll be next. electric impact works pretty good there we go now what we need to do is also check the quality of the pads and although they are not perfect they are not worn out the rotor feels pretty good but let's look at this again in here And it looks pretty good. Inside one looks decent. Right. Right here is the metal of the pad. This is the pad material. So there's quite a bit of material left. There's the rotor. And the outside pad is a little more worn, but it's still pretty good too. So we will not be replacing the pads. Although it's a part. And it's a good time to do it. We're on a very limited budget here. We're fixing only what's broke. Now, this is sometimes difficult on on rear brakes because the parking brake is integral to the drum. I mean, to the to the disc. I'm not certain how it retracts. Maybe the piston screws back in or something like that. But I'm not 100% sure how this parking brake works. Oh, now I know. It's a drum. It's a little drum. Uh, it could be a challenge. So this piston should retract with a little bit of prying right spot we just won't get enough of that fluid pushed back you can see a little so you can get the screwdriver tip in there between the pad and the rotor now so when I go to remove the caliper it'll come off easy there we go hey, it'll come off easy now, what is the size that that requires? That also looks like a 13. I have a 13 right over here from removing the uh, uh, cover. So, let's see if it fits. Is it a 13? Yes. I believe it is. Well, in that case, let's see if we can... Uh, Loosen these up. I'm going to be wishing I had a different... Oh, it's easy. Unbelievable. Sometimes these things are so tied that you want to kill somebody for doing it. <laughs> All right. That's one bolt. Let's see if I get lucky on this one. And pull. Yep. 
it's kind of scary when you pull it and it's really easy if you think that maybe it broke off but it did not I know you guys up in the northern climates you suffer with the bolts I don't think I could do it these cars down here they don't rust at all none 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 no rust in the quarter panels no rust in the doors uh, now I gotta protect that hose somehow and we'll just put it right there for the time being slide the rotor off oh good it's coming off its little drum easy drop it there oh look at that the shoes just just fell right out well that means it's gonna have parking brake shoes nice I wonder if that's the roaring noise I hear you know what it very well could be it could be well the bearings nearly out all you have to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get under it. I'm going to pull this in with my shoe, with my foot. And I will watch that clip fall out. And I'm going to turn it with my toe. See here? Turn the axle with my toe. And you hear that? I'm oh, falling apart. I think the spider gears just fell out of it. That's nice. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah let's rotate this if we can there we go and see the axle right here and it pushes in there it already has so where is the clip the clip is laying in there somewhere I'll take these spider gears out there's a little magnetic pad right there that catches fine particles. Pull the spider gears out. There's, well darn it. Glad I got these gloves on. There's your little C-clip. Now the axle will slide right out. yucka do. But I think that's the roaring problem, actually. And the howling. Oh, no, I don't. This bearing surface is ruined. It needs the brake shoes and the bearings. So my diagnosis was good after all. It needs an axle. Pretty bad. That's a shame. That means the other Jeep has to go on the trailer. And I gotta pull the axle out of it. At least I have it. Alright. We've got it apart. We know what the problem is. We need some parking brake shoes. And we need an axle. And we need to go to the parts store and get a new bearing. What you do here is you pop the seal out. It'll come out easy enough. I might drill it and pull it out. Or maybe pop it out with this. Or, or, or a hooked screwdriver. You know, it's like a pry bar. Pop it in there. And, and then uh, you had to have a puller to get in here and pull this out. And I have that, I think. We have diagnosed it. Let me uh, elaborate on this axle here real quick. Let me go get some to wipe up with. Okay, it's not something you can see easily unless you clean it up. But... This bearing surface right here should be just as smooth as the rest of it. There's where the, the seal has been riding. 
but the bearing is just chowder disc axle up it needs an axle and it needs a bearing because that will continue to roar with a new bearing yeah that's what we got to do that means we got to take two cars apart darn it oh well is what it is and I'd rather have this problem than have to deal with the gears. I believe the gears are just fine. Yeah, that's not much slack at all. Yeah, so that's what I got to do next. Is go ahead and load my black parts Jeep on the trailer. And that way I'll have it ready for tear down. Okay, we're going to use this to remove the seal. We're going to use this to remove this seal. Just pop it in here. What do you want to do though, before we just be malicious about it, get in here and see where the numbers are located on it. Because you may need those numbers to uh, compare with and try to pry in an area where you don't destroy those numbers. So you stick it in there and go pop, pop, pop. And it, it should pop right out, but sometimes not. Hold on, it's gonna be a mess. Let's prevent the mess. All right, and there it is. Now, that's going to be another issue. Let's look at it a little bit. We want to look at it. Look at those bearings. I wonder if they uh, replaced the bearing in hopes that it would get rid of the noise and then found that the axle was bad. I just wonder. That's always a possibility. So let's get a really good look at this. I feel of the bearings with my finger. And they are very, very smooth. All of them. I don't know what the race feels like. The rear end's been apart for some reason, and I am nearly willing to bet that the reason that it's apart is to fix that noise. And they discovered that uh, it had a bad axle. They put a new bearing in it and discovered it had a bad axle and decided not to go any further well this morning i removed the axle out of this black parts jeep put in an old green goblin there it's the same process as i just showed you difference this is the one out of the green one the axle and this is the one out of the black one yeah you can see where the bearing was just beginning to go bad if it'll focus in and all this reflection is not helping there you can see a few lines in here but the new bearing will take care of that but this one's chowdered up pretty bad Big difference. That should stop the noise. Well, I'm having a heck of a time getting this bearing out, and it's because I don't have the right tool for the job. But I do have this thing, and I modified it up to my to rig it, rigged it up to my slide hammer. And about all I can do is get get a hook into the race 
and pull on it and it's coming out a little bit at a time uh, I can't do this and record it unfortunately but I just hook it in there with one of these hooks and uh, hammer on it and it, it's coming out it took me nearly an hour it took nearly an hour to get this brace out of here I mean that that bearing well by the time I got done it was just a race between a slide hammer attached to this rickety crap and rotary files and drill bits and a couple of sharp chisels a little bit of scoring but that won't be any big problem those metal shavings will get caught up on the magnet I can't get them out of there I might be able to but I don't know anyway I got it out it's a little bit it's a little bit burred up but I can drive the new bearing in there and the ray it, it just holds it anyway it doesn't matter that much Whoo! what a job it's bound to go back together easier than it came apart I was able to tap it in with this although it didn't fit perfect I just uh, pushed right on the outer part of that bearing don't ever hit the bearings themselves you'll just ruin it so I tapped along the outside edge till uh, you hear the sound change the bearing will bottom out and all of a sudden it'll sound really solid instead of not solid <laughs> for lack of a better word now let's get that seal and treat it much the same way just kind of lay it up here just a little bit with your hammer and tap it lightly well get it in there and then just kind of tap it lightly well shoot is it that's all right i can hit that all right i'm gonna i'm gonna use this it's a big old socket and i can't do it and hold it so i'll show you when i'm finished it's in i'm gonna get a little of grease and pack into that bearing just a little bit to kind of give it that initial protection because it's way out here the oil has to make its way from the center of the axle all the way out here so i'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a little help a little bit of help so i got a little wheel bearing grease here and i'll just kind of rub it around in there that'll get it and quit rattling put a little on the seal here yep now i need to replace these shoes so I'm going to get my fingers cleaned up, go remember, move the parts from the other one, and put them on here. All right, the parking brake on the Liberty. It looks rather straightforward and simple. Push these clips down. May have to uh, push them down a little harder than you think. There is bound to be a special tool for this. So I'm pushing it down. So what I'm gonna have to do is push this down and on the back side, hold that pin out and this clip should come right off. Hold on. And it did. What you do is you hold on the back side. You gotta hold this pin on the back side and get your tool in here and push down and slide it down at the same time. And if you're holding the pin, that will allow it, the pin to go through the big, big part of that clip. Now, 
I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here is well I don't know what to do next I'm gonna have to get this spring off of here that should be easy enough to do uh, I've seen people use pliers some cut off pliers and grab a hold of it look at that that's all it takes you just gotta wiggle it just right and it'll fall apart something fell down in here looks like it was the brake shoe fell underneath my trailer and uh that is that now where's the other brake shoe here it is there's the spring is missing now i guess it's down here too somewhere not to worry even if i don't find it i still have the other the other part but you see what i mean it's relatively easy you just manipulate the springs a little bit and it just comes apart it comes right apart there's this yeah some stuff flew away this and this and clips and pins and assorted things I wonder where they flew to we're after the shoes anyway so it doesn't matter much I'm sure that I'll find them when I move the trailer but I'll handle the other side with both hands you won't get to see it happen but you saw what happened here and just flew apart uh, I'm gonna be much more careful over there so I can keep all my pieces so I'll show you when I get it together that really wasn't all that hard to do uh, install these little clips on these pins uh, I put this spring in and I put this in the adjuster and then install the spring put this in first and then hook it on here with a pair of pliers fairly straightforward not a bad task to perform at all now the axle will go in the axle slipped in with the axle slipped in with minimal effort at i mean it just slid right in there no big deal now we got to deal with these uh, spider gears and and uh the pin and all that stuff put this rear end back together okay looks like uh that axle shoved the spider gear out of its position so it'll have to be manipulated back in there that's nice nothing like having an additional little issue going on not a big deal but just something else so there it went shake it back up in there there we go now shove the axle back in again <laughs> that gear keeps sliding no it didn't all right let's see if we can find that little c-clip both of them are out of here aren't they nice and it's greasy as hell and there's one there's one we'll stick him over here and To it right there and push the wheel out there it's in there good now I we'll have to find the other C clip and it's not right there no uh -uh, of course not let's go see if we can get it off the other car the one off the other car I think I'm upside down there we go maybe that'll help this is the one off the other car shove it up in that slot kind of rotate it up so the openings are on the bottom that way it can't fall out and uh, find something suitable screwdriver will work and push the axle out so it 
clip won't fall out. Like I say, this gear has a groove inside of it that retains that clip. So if it's in there, and inside the, there it is, all the way up in that notch. Huh, look here. Here it is. Oh, we'll put in the other one. All right, now we need to rotate. No, not yet. What we're gonna have to do is get my spider gears right here. Poke them in here. This is kind of tricky. And uh, not very much fun. You gotta watch out, it'll pinch the shit out of you. And you gotta work it in there so it, it meshes with the gears. Lay it right up in here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay it right up in here. And rotate the wheel. And it should just slide right up there. Like so. Now we'll get the other one. Now it has a washer on it. A spacer. Be sure that's on there. Oh God, this is killing me. Holding this phone up here. And just trying to film this at the same time. I need to rotate this whole thing here. Up. Up. Rotate that. Rotate that gear so it stays. Rotate this some more. Got to try to work it all in here together. All right. Cram this up in here. This is really tricky. Hold on. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate this and rotate that. <laughs> I'm going to have to put the phone down. That's going to be a two-handed operation. I'm going to have to end up where these gears are lined up with this hole. But inside this carrier. Okay. Got the gears in there. Got the pin installed. Now I need to move this gear back, bring gear back so I can access this hole and put this little pin in here. It's the magic pin that holds everything together. Yep, there we go. Get the wrench and finish tightening that up. Okay. The gears are back in, the pin is in, it's bolted in. It's time to wipe that thing out, clean up the surfaces, put a bead of silicone on, bolt it down. And I'll be done with the rear end. Except for putting the, the disc, the caliper, and the, and the wheel back on. So, uh, it's all kind of straightforward stuff. Like I say, I'll be cleaning up the... The, uh, the pan and the mating surfaces on the rear end and finishing the brakes. And that'll be that. Appreciate you watching this little video. It's kind of long, I know. And it kind of shows you the horrors of not working with the right tools. So, uh, you guys have a good day. And I'll catch you later. Well, it was absolute success with the axle. No more noise. I'm really glad. This thing is getting quieter and more tame by the moment. You guys have a great day. Appreciate you watching this. I know it's very long. I've said that before, haven't I? Anyway, take care. You'll see me next time.